For this video, I am going to attempt to go through the entire modeling process for GLM in one shot. Okay, first I've got a data set straight out of FIA. <clears throat> I'm going to drag and drop that into Blue Spray, which of course throws up a couple dialogues. Okay, and here we've got Pitch Pine, which I don't think I've worked with before. Um, and it's difficult to tell exactly what's going on until we drag another layer in there. So let's go ahead and find a bioclimb layer. I tend to use annual mean temp for a lot of demos, probably because it's at the top of the list. And once we do that, it'll come on top. So I'm going to drag my plant points on top of it. <clears throat> Sweet. And we can see it's a northeast species pretty much throughout the northeast. And if we do settings, whoop, sorry, wrong one. Settings, we can see that our bioclimb layer is pretty big. Um, 41 meg, which is going to be too much to convert and bring into R, but that's okay. We'll take care of that in a second. All right. Um, our FIA data, if we look at the attributes for it, uh, we've got what we've used in the past. There's a count field, also has max height, min height, but for GLMs, we're just looking for presence absence. So the basic idea is to be able to create a final map, we want to have our entire study area with presence absence points in it. So the first step is to crop out our study area. Now, what exactly your study area is, is important, but often somewhat challenging to figure out. I'm just going to put a box around all the points plus some extra because it's like it goes to here in Maine, but why doesn't it go further? Maybe there's a cold limit there. Um, and it looks like it's limited by temperature in the south. So we want to get some of this in here so we have those dynamics in our model. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and crop my raster to that area of interest. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and remove this good to keep removing things. We're not using up too much memory. Drag that on top. Okay, now, um, that's a pretty good area of interest, I think. But if we go into settings, you'll see that this raster, whoops, raster, is still too big to bring into R, right? It's got 12 million pixels in it. Um, R might do that, but wouldn't be done in one video, that's for sure. So we need to downsample it. And I'm going to downsample it pretty hard to get things to work quickly. Um, not only for this video, but I tend to do this the first time I do things. So I'm going to downsample that by a factor of eight. <clears throat> okay, if you zoom in, you'll see it's pretty blocky. I might actually downsample that some more. Uh, 100,000 bytes now it's integer two bytes per so it's a hundred thousand entries in r for a video to me that is still too um, many points so i'm going to go ahead and downsample it again by a factor of two and now you can really see it's blocky and you can also see that now we've got 50 thousand 20 20 thousand points that's fine for r to deal with okay um, and I'm going to go ahead and remove my other ones. Okay, so now we've got just this one layer that we're going to start with. And we're going to use that for our annual temperature uh, covariate, but we're also going to use it to establish um, all of our area for presence absence. Okay, so the way we do that is uh, we convert it to points. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we take this area and we convert it to points. I usually don't do this really fast and I really don't recommend doing it really quickly because uh, it gets confusing. Okay, so now notice we have our grid in the background. That's going to be our entire sample area that we bring into R. And then we have our plots. Now to extract our plots into our points, right, we need to go ahead and convert our plots to a raster. But to do that, we need to know the resolution that we want to convert them to. So we go to our sample data set, do, 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 get the settings, and we see that its resolution is 0 0.1333, which is close enough. So now we're going to convert our uh, sample points 
to, oh, what was it? See, that's what happens when you go too fast. It is 0.133333 something. Okay, so we're gonna convert that to a raster. 0.1333. Okay, and we wanna make sure it's the same uh, dimensions and resolution as our sampled one. Oh, I could have just done that. Yeah, that's easier. Okay. Okay, now we also want to make sure that we're doing this to an attribute. We don't want to do painting. We want to pull an attribute and put in into our raster. And I'm going to pull the count. Okay. We could just, you know, do this and use anything for it, um, anything for the, the value in the raster. But if I use count, I might use that later on. And now you can see that what we've got is a raster that has a count of all, not only the points. Ooh, did I pick the right one? I need to make sure that when I convert this to raster, okay, I not only do attribute, ah, but I want to do the sum. In other words, I want to take the counts from my sample points and I want to sum them up so that what we end up with, and see that's a little different, is now what we have is each of these squares represents, each of the, the points in the raster represents the number of counts but added up so sum of all of the counts of all these points that fall inside of that pixel okay so we now have that in a raster and we now have our uh wait see it's one of the reasons that you want to get rid of these but i want to get rid of them too fast so now we have our points in our raster and now what we want to do is go to the attribute table this is our actual um, area data set we'll bring in and remember this was um, annual temp is what we created the raster with sorry the points with so I want to rename that annual temp 64-bit uh, is good and then I want to go ahead and insert a column on the right and that is going to be our count and you could make that an integer. I just tend to make just about all numbers floats in case I do any calculations with them. Then we go ahead and do an extract. And we only have one raster left. This is what, why it's good to remove things from blue spray when you're done with them. Um, we want to put that in the attribute. And the mean shouldn't matter, right? We should only have one raster value uh, over each pixel, so we should be OK. And when we extract that, um, it ends up being mostly zeros, but if you scroll down, you'll see there's some other values in there. Okay, so this is our data set now. Um, and we can export that. And I'm going to go save that. Um, pitch pine. So I'm going to call this US, or let's call it pitch pine. US since we're covering most of the US and then I want to go ahead and save that as a CSV and that's fine and it writes it out it's still fairly large up 12,000 points so that's pretty good and then we're going to go to our folder and find that data set I just have to find my cursor Okay, there's our pitch pine data set. Now, you you could do this in ARC or another package. I just tend to work um, in Excel when it's easy. And in Excel to create a presence um, column, all we need to do is an if statement and say if this value is greater than zero, make it a one, otherwise make a zero. Okay, and we double click. And that's going to compute all those values. And we can test that by going to data, descending sort. And we can see that, oh, look, there's lots of ones, but then even more zeros. OK, so now we've got our x, our y, and our presence data. Yay! Um, and we've got a covariate annual temp that we can use for modeling. So time to save that. 
and then into R. And I'm going to grab the name of this file. And I'm in R, and I've already done this because this will speed this up a little bit. Okay, but you can go ahead and do the shift click to get the path. And then remember to change the direction of the slashes. And we've done this before. Uh, if you go through the tutorial, I'll show you how to get the GLM. Go ahead and read it in. Don't forget to do NA omit to get rid of any blank lines. And then we can go ahead and plot it. And isn't that interesting? <laughs> wow. Hmm. Something is curious there. Because, yeah, that's bizarre. I, I haven't done this before, so, but I'm a little suspicious. This discontinuity here is very strange and why is present doing that i think something's wrong you know i'm not sure i called that presence um i'm going to clean everything out because that's a good thing to do and i should have done it anyway okay and then let's go ahead and do this again take a look at the data ah presence I put in present. Notice that R doesn't really give you error messages on some things you might think that it would. Let's try that. Better. So at least now it does look like we've got zeros and ones. Okay. Um, it also doesn't look like a very good relationship, right? It's like, what, what? We don't really have, as temperature increases, we don't get more presence values. So this is not going to be a very good GLM model. Um, but it will work out well when we go to habitat suitability because we can see that there's low temp doesn't do so well then it has an intermediate range where it does well high temps not so well so this is the kind of thing that uh, we can do some work with GAMS but especially with habitat suitability models that's what they do okay so then I'm gonna go ahead and run the GLM which is just presence against temperature in this case You'll want to add some more covariates. Oh, and annual temp is not found. Did I change the spelling on it as well? Annual temp. Well, safest thing to do is just go dollar sign annual temp. Then you should find it. Yes. Now we have our GLM. And there's our GLM. And with a bunch of statistics that we'll talk about more. AIC being the one that you'll be looking at to... Uh, use to help you pick the best model. More on that later. All right, so uh, if we go ahead and plot it, you can see that there's our residuals versus fitted. Hmm. This is a really fun one, I think. Yeah, normal QQ. Hopefully you'd look at that and go, that is not a good normal QQ. But that's okay, I'll explain why. Okay. So yeah, these aren't very useful when you look at the GLM. Um, if you look at the residuals, okay, oh, and histogram them, <clears throat> well, that doesn't look good because we want a normal distribution, not a bimodal distribution. That would be bad. Um, here's our model. Let's go ahead and plot it. Um, and there's that weird artifact again. Darn it, did I do the wrong thing? Presence, presence, no, no. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, we can do a prediction. And we need to make sure we plot the right thing. Okay, so there's our original data. And so notice for the prediction, I just went ahead and used the same data. So it'll create the same number of points, same number of values. Okay. And... There's our prediction. Not really what we're looking for. Okay, and don't worry if this happens to you. Um, it just means that you are actually capturing the full environmental range um, and covariate range of the species. So we need to go to habitat suitability. Um, don't consider this to be a failure. Consider this to be um, we're using the wrong modeling method, which is okay. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and call this modeling output two. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. And now we can go ahead and do, 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 do 
there's our modeling output two back to blue spray where blue spray go and we can go ahead and drag this back okay and cool um, there's our point grid the last thing we need to do is convert that back into a raster um, now a couple things you can do one is you can go find out what our um, original resolution was that the raster was or you can just measure it here and I tend to do the measuring thing there's our whoops 0 0.3333 okay and the reason I tend to do that is because to make this work well um, when I convert it to a raster well let's just go ahead and try it see what happens so it saved our settings from last time but usually when I do that I get breaks but of course when I'm doing it on video it works fine um, now isn't this interesting we take our original points and we lay it on top sure enough wow it actually worked better than I ever would have expected that's kind of amazing it especially captured this really dense area I I'm kind of surprised that it worked this well at all um, so cool anyway but there's our habitat suitability model which we can then put into a map and something like arc or Q and colorize it and add it into our assignment have fun